keep you healthy. And uh, <clears throat> health of body and mind are important. Two things. A man is made up of two things, uh, basically. That is the body and the spirit or mind. And if one of them is sick, then the whole being is sick. And they are interlinked. So healthy living to most people means physical, that is the body, and mental health are in balance. So if they are out of balance, then you are in trouble. Uh, in many instances, physical and mental well-being um, are important and are closely linked so that if one is bad, the other one is also bad. For instance, let me give an example here. There is a, a patient who came to see me, uh, a lady, because I see mostly ladies, and she told me, Dr. I have a problem of an order. You know when I say an order? O D or dual. Come on, the Unadika or dual. Order. That is smell. Kamuriza, why? Who tells you are smelling? She told me, every time I nikigia matatu, watu anajishika nini? Mapua. And you know, this is just something she's thinking. Eh? Nikamwabia bona mimi sijasikia. Nanuka. So when we went to the examination couch, because the, the, the interview takes place on the, at the table there, then we get into another room where I have to examine. I don't know for what reason, nikaeda kujishika hivo. And she told me, si unauna hata wewe umejishika mapua. <laughs> so this lady had this feeling that ananuka, that is not a physical illness. It is a what? Psychological, mental illness. So, lifestyle diseases is diseases that if you change your lifestyle, you'll be able to uh, prevent some of the diseases that come to us. A disease that potentially can be prevented by changes in diet, environment, or lifestyle. And these are the diseases that you can change by doing, changing those things in the same way for diet, environment, lifestyle. Heart disease. Heart disease. Uh, heart disease can be two types. One is you are born with it, that is uh, congenital, or it's acquired. <clears throat> acquired means you have acquired it in life. Um, then things like stroke. Stroke is uh, when you find people walking with a limp. Na mkono ina enda hivi. That means a paralyzed one side of the brain. Okay, that's a stroke. Obesity. Obesity. Ni kuwa mkubo beyond your height. I have taught about how to determine your optimum weight uh, through something we call body mass index. Body mass index. And uh, since you are writing, <laughs> let me give you the formula to determine your weight. What is your weight? One, it is uh, weight in kilograms. Weight, yakotu. Your own weight in kilograms. So say you are 65, 55. I can see many of you are not beyond 70. Apart from uh, myself, Namuze Mwingini. <laughs> <laughs> Now, so that age, 
I mean that weight you divide by height, your height, which we write at ht squared. That is your height in meters, not in centimeters, in meters. Now, how do, uh, what makes one meter? How many centimeters? 100. So if you are 1.6, 1.6 meters, most people are around there, it is 1.6 squared. And the height, weight, dio is the de numerator. Denominator is height in meters squared. So equals, you get a figure, isn't it? The figure you get is your body mass index. And uh, the normal, if you want to write the normal, you should be between uh, 18 and 24.9 or say 25. So the figure you get at equals, if it is beyond 25, you are tending towards me. Yeah. Okay. If it is less than 18, you are underweight. You need to eat more. Okay. So you can, if you know your height, you know your, your weight, you can already tell me your body mass index already. And uh, you'll find that if your body mass index is uh, 25 to 30, you are overweight. Okay? That's the interpretation. Between 18 and 25, you are normal. Say normal. Uh, between 25 and 30, you are overweight. So you need to do something about it. If you are between 30, 31 to 35, you are obese. Obese. You are now even viewed overweight, you are obese. Above 36, you are pathologically obese. <laughs> Yours is pathological. Huh? And then <clears throat> osteoporosis. Osteoporosis is a weakening of bones. They become weak. Uh, such that when you fall down, you are likely to get a fracture. So if you do some things we are going to see here, you can avoid it. Now, some of this eating, I mean, uh, changes that you need to do regards your eating habits. Your eating habits. And uh, what I'm saying there is that you are, uh, can you read there? You are what you eat, when you eat, and how you eat it. How do you prepare what you are eating? What you eat depends on is it a good diet. Um, if you are given, say, githeri, because me, I was brought up by my mother eating githeri back home, uh, and you are given a pizza. Which one are you likely to want to eat? Pizza, yeah, because you people, young people, <laughs> you want pizza. But unfortunately, pizza is not good food. It is very tasty, very smart in the way it tastes, but it's not good for your health. So don't eat a lot of burgers, because those are the things that people eat in town, chips. Um, we call them junk food. Uh, eat wholesome food. Uh, in the morning, make a habit of eating arrowroots, Doma, Goachi. In fact, if you put before me in, in the morning breakfast, you put bread, you put Goachi and Doma, you'll never touch bread. But young people like you, you know, you want to eat bread. I think it's because I've eaten bread too much. Um, that is what you eat is important. Mostly uh, the things you need to eat are whole grains, like the, what I'm saying there, of course, that is whole grain of maize and beans, or 
eh, njugu sometimes for call jogo na ni minji ni kwetu when do you eat it you are supposed to have three meals in a day that is uh, breakfast lunch and dinner and the order in which you eat that, that those meals is that the heaviest meal should be breakfast heaviest meal should be breakfast but we 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 are brought up reversing that order you eat heaviest meal in the evening when you are watching tv dinner <laughs> that's what you eat now the most and you find that you start having problems in the night you can't sleep well because you have taken too much um so breakfast we say in the morning eat like a king that means you eat very good food in the morning lunch eat like a prince mtoto wa king and then dinner eat like a pauper that means a poor person sometimes just if you are still not feeling hungry just eat uh, a fruit and uh, some chocolate or something don't fool you, put your <laughs> stomach a lot of githeri <laughs> and then you are going to bed uh, because it makes you wake up around around 3 a.m it wakes you up you feel like throwing up because of sleeping with a full stomach uh, how you eat it how you prepare how is, is the, your food being prepared and one important thing because uh, you are the new generation uh, we used to eat uh, or prepare food using three stones eh we there even here other new airport do you require a picker uh, squeeze we are using new stuff like uh, microwave you know but microwave be careful don't uh, Uh, heat uh, food using plastic containers and you put it in the microwave you heat because it has been found that con- that plastic sometimes gets into food because of that heat uh, microwave and then you are eating your food together with plastics which ma- eventually when you eat for too long you find yourself coming up with cancer I have said this uh, three meals it's important to remember dinner does not have to be the largest meal uh, the bulk of food consumption should consist of fruits uh, vegetables whole grains now there is a formula people use and uh, and you'll find this uh, nutritionist giving you that kind of a formula if you if you are uh, plate is around divided into four in a, into what quarters isn't it so the first quarter is carbohydrates second quarter is proteins now the other two quarters veggies you, you understand what i mean such that you are eating carbohydrates a quarter of the plate proteins a quarter and then the others are veggies vegetables and that way you will manage to keep your weight down i uh, choose to eat lean meats poultry that is uh, chicken white this is called white meat eh? uh, fish beans eggs and nuts with emphasis on beans and nuts they are important we'll see in another slide uh, how they even prevent you from getting cancer which has become a menace in in our country choose foods that are low in saturated fats uh, trans fats cholesterol sodium uh, they should have very low sugar i mean salt and sugars also we don't find people adding sugar in in food but if you go to china where where i've been when i studied there you go to a restaurant if you order food 
you will find that the, it has a lot of sugar. It's actually tasting like sugar. But they add sugar. Them, they add sugar. So avoid eating sugars. Look at the labels because they are first listed items. And learn to know what you are eating. In, in the label, if you are buying something that has a label, you should know what are the ingredients. And then uh, in terms of mo mo the amount of food you are going to eat, you eat the smallest portion that satisfies your hunger and then stop eating. The trouble is that sometimes you, you have eaten yakutosha and you unaendelea kuongezewa. Just eat the enough to satisfy hunger and then st you stop. Uh, avoid. These are things to avoid. Sodas. And this is very common among you people. <laughs> eh? You just want to eat something that is tasting sweet. Sodas. Sugar enhanced drinks. That is uh, like fruit juices. There are some fruit juices. Companies that make fruit juices like apple or pineapple or orange. And it is not the actual fruit. They have, you know, uh, done something to get that juice. It is flavoring, flavoring the juice to make it sound, taste like orange or apple or pineapple. That is what is called sugar enhanced drinks. And they have excessive calories. Do you know uh, a soda, 500 milliliter soda of uh, Coke? Have you had how many, how many spoons of sugar it contains? How many people know? One soda, the one of uh, Coke, it has 13 spoons. 13. Yeah. So if you take one Coke, and when people feel hungry, that's what they, they want to grab. You have eaten... 13 spoons of sugar. Uh, diet drinks may not be a good choice as they make some people hungrier. You know, when people started complaining of uh, Coke, that it has too much sugar, they brought something called Diet Coke uh, to, to kind of capture the people who are now sensitive to sugar. Uh, and this is what I'm saying, that diet drinks are not good also. Hmm? Avoid eating large meal before sleeping. You have already said that, to decrease gastro ref gastroesophageal reflux or weight gain. You see, what happens when you eat food, and this is the formula you should, you should know. If your body, depending on the nature of your work. Say your work involves, you know, digging, farm, you know, farming back home. And your body that day, because of that nature of work, requires 3,000 calories. Okay? Then you eat food that gives you 3,500 calories. So what happens? The 500 balance is stored as fat. And that's why I said, if you eat a very heavy meal in the morning, because you are working, you are going to work, you go to chamber, you go to the office, you keep on walking, you are spending, you are spending what you have eaten. Uh, this, take the same, you eat 4,000 calories worth of food, and you are going to bed you are not going to, exp to expend that energy. So the whole amount will be made into fat and uh, your body just puts it into fat areas. That's why it is important that you follow the instructions. Avoid rewarding children with sugary snacks. When you get uh, children, young people, 
we have seen this in the supermarkets. You enter a supermarket, a certain child with a mother, you know, in tow, or a child in tow, starts making some noise, you know, a meona kit one attack, and sends uh, uh, what we call tenter tantrums. And the mother, because uh, of embarrassment, just buys a sweet to keep this child quiet. That's wrong. So don't, avoid, don't reward children with sugary snacks. Because that is a pattern that become a lifelong habit. Every time an attacker kid to sweet, to make him feel good. Exercise, this is another one. So we have dealt with diet, and then we are in the other part that now helps you to maintain your health, that is exercise. Physical activity um, is, a, is a major contributor to a healthy lifestyle. And sometimes when people hear physical activity, they only think of gym, visiting a gym. Uh, I wanted one time to really work on my weight myself. So I went and enlisted in a gym and I found that what they are doing in the gym is there is this treadmill and people are running on it. No? So first day uh, I ran on it Kidogo too. But as I got used to the treadmill, I can I could keep up with the veterans who were there before, who have been there going year in, year out. And me, I'm like a month old in the gym. Then I started feeling my hip, hip joints, they are affected. And when I went for an x-ray, I found that uh, I was actually destroying my hip joint. My, the hip joint is usually like a, a ball, ball and a, a cup, okay? It fits into your body more or less like this. This is the, the bone. It fits into a cup like that. And that's where it moves. So between the bone and the cup is where I was destroying by running on the, on the treadmill. So you, even though you may want to go to treadmill, it is good, it will help you and other exercises, but it's also expensive and there is a cheaper way of doing it by just walking, walking. If you live in uh, Bahati here, we are in Bahati, instead of choosing to take a mat here, you can choose to walk to town. You can choose to ride a bicycle Although the, our roads are not made for that kind of uh, traveling, you can also choose to, you know, ride a bicycle walking. Of course, running, people will think you are crazy. <laughs> um, so, those are the simple things you can do and help yourself. Uh, yesterday I was in a, you know where University of Nairobi is? Uh, particularly where the halls are. Uh, there is a church there, and that's where I normally go, called St. Andrew's Church. Uh, so I asked for, I was going back to my office from there. So I asked, uh, I called for a Uber to take me to my office. And I found the Uber was charging me, you know they, they tell you in that app, isn't it? They tell you the price you will pay before even the driver comes. So I found I was going to pay 1250 I said, no, let me walk. And I walked all the way from there to my office in Afia Center, which is healthy. And I, I, I thank God for giving me that insight that walking would be better. <laughs> and of course, it, is, it makes good 
cents or cents, isn't it? It's because I saved 1,250. <laughs> um, people are made to use their bodies and disuse leads to unhealthy living. If you disuse your body by just sitting down, you are not moving, you are disusing your body. And that is not healthy. So regular exercise can prevent and reverse age-related decreases in muscle mass and strength. Muscle mass and strength. Um, they improve balance because you are walking or you are doing a physical exercise. You, you are less likely to fall down or trip over. Then you become more flexible because of exercise. You are able to endure endurance. Um, one of the things that people do who work in offices, uh, like us, uh, we are recommended to take less of the lift if we are say, staying in the fifth floor of a building. Just walk instead of taking the lift. I normally see people uh, in our building, Mutu Anaenda M2, number M3, which is two floors. And I go here, lift up. And uh, when I, we took Nigeria Pamoja and Afinia M2, Naskia Kumuabia, why didn't you walk? <laughs> eh? There is a, a friend of mine, Dr. Colleague. He used to stay in a you know, corner house. His office was in M3. And that building was up to, I think, 14 floors. He would park his car in the basement, go past his office, go all the way to the top, to 14th floor, walking. Then he comes down from 14th to M3. That is enough exercise for the whole day, let me tell you. Walking. I'm a fan of the whole week, almost. <laughs> so it also decreases the uh, risk of falls in the, when you are old. So unhealthy living may manifest itself in obesity, weakness, lack of endurance. And this is one of the things that uh, I personally find myself being affected. Because you climb some stairs, by the time you reach fifth floor, <laughs> you say, <sighs> Nahema. Like your heart calls to come out. <laughs> eh? And then overall poor, poor health that may bring problems in future. So regular exercise can prevent coronary heart disease, stroke, diabetes, obesity, high blood pressure. Regular weight bearing exercise can also help prevent Osteoporosis, because the bones become stronger. I told you osteoporosis means softening of the bones mm. by building the bone. Uh, regular exercise can also uh, help you avoid chronic arthritis and uh, perform, you know, you are able to perform such duties as driving, climbing stairs, opening jars, and all. So regular exercise also can help you increase self-esteem, self-confidence, and decreases stress, anxiety, and enhances mood. Uh, regular exercise can help control weight gain and some people loss of fat. So 30 minutes of uh, modest exercise, that is just walking, at least three to five days a week is recommended. 
just walking a little bit distance, a lot of distance kidogo to maybe one kilometer and back. If you do that, and you can do that as when you come back from work, then that is enough. Um, you can also, I normally recommend that even at in your own house, uh, your room, room, even if you don't have a house now, um, but I'm sure you are in, you stay in some room. Find a, a small mattress, just like a flat mattress. You put it down. You do if you want to flatten your tummy. You can do lifting of that is called um, uh, sit-ups. You know, you put your hand, your two hands behind, and then you you lift your head and or lift your legs up one una hesabu 10 times mugu moja 10 times mugu moja hii ngine then 10 times mugu yote biri and that way you strengthen your your abdominal muscles and that kind of thing does not require you to to pay a gym to to help you uh, then it is recommended that you start slowly. You don't start the way I did in the treadmill. In fact, I almost destroyed my hips. You start slowly and progress gradually. Let it be gradual. And over time, you can build uh, even 30 to 60 minutes of vigorous training uh, in good time. And uh, people are not, never too old to start. You can start at any time. For you, people are young. Um, people can start even at uh, seven to eight years, and they can they can do this exercise. I've seen some uh, competition of old people, ninety and above. You know, manakibia one hundred meters. <laughs> And even if they are running just like this, you still have a winner. <laughs> and uh, that is very good. Um, so these are the kind of exercises, resistance, resistance to something. That means when you are raising your leg, you know you are using abdominal muscles, so they become stronger. With lifters, if they want to make the biceps very big, they make resistance against the biceps. Biceps is this one. Yeah. Water aerobics, walking, uh, swimming, lifting weights. Yoga is recommended by people from the East and many others. Things to avoid in order to remain healthy. Avoid smoking, that is use of tobacco. In 90% of men, lung cancer can, is, a, is, a, is a problem. It's attributable. Lung cancer is attributable to smoking. And in 80% of women. This is particularly in the West. We, our women don't really smoke that much. Uh, tobacco use causes cancer of the lung, mouth, lip, tongue, esophagus, kidney, bladder. All these cancers come from tobacco. Alcohol use, chronic excessive use of alcohol is a major cause of something we call liver cirrhosis, which is a precursor of uh, cancer of the uh, liver, hepatoma. Uh, liver cirrhosis, uh, which comes from now taking too much alcohol, uh, it leads to internal hemorrhage. You start bleeding inside, and uh, sometimes they, they can bleed from the esophagus. So much blood until you find like they, they are anemic because of that. Um, fluid accumulation in the abdomen, 
Uh, then is a bleeding and bruising because the liver has been affected. Uh, muscle wasting, mental confusion, infections in advanced cases, coma, and then kidney failure. And this, that is towards uh, the final stages of your disease. Um, uh, high risk, this is the third one that we have dealt with. I hope you are getting these things, the broad groups. We talked about diet, yeah? just a uh, cup, uh, diet. Then we have done uh, exercise. Now we are in uh, an area uh, called high risk sexual behavior. Because it also means whether you live or you die early. If you get, uh, if you are living like this, high risk sexual behavior, and I said in the, in the morning, in the earlier session, that um, you find a person having multiple friends, um, whether male or female, this one doesn't choose, then you are likely to get these infections. And I said these infections are the ones that cause infertility, even when you are treated and you get well, the repercussions are still there with you. So that you will eventually come now saying, okay, I'm married for five years and we can't get a baby. Why? Then when we investigate, we find that this is what really killed your ability to conceive. Gonorrhea is one of them. It blocks fallopian tubes very fast. And the way they block the fallopian tubes, you cannot be treated. Yes, you are treated, ukapona iyo, like in the repercussions, diosasas na kukura. Syphilis can stay in a body for even 30, 40 years. You got it when you are young, like there is a muse who I was surprised the other day. Um, He's a muse I know, and uh, because he got sick, and doctors could not explain why he's sick, you know, we tend to do very many tests in an, in an attempt to find out what is ailing you. So they found that uh, he, had, he had this severis. And I'm saying it can catch you when you are young, stays dormant in your body until you are 6 to 70 years. This muse is almost 70. And eventually, because it goes in stages, there is stage one, stage two, stage three, stage four. Stage four is starts eating your brain. You get confused. Um, and then that is the end. Then uh, herpes, herpes simplex. This together with HPV, this together with this one, are the causes of cervical cancer, the two of them. So cervical cancer is not something that you get from people. I mean, uh, if you sit next to somebody who has it, this is sexually transmitted disease. Uh, you get this HP, herpes simplex and HPV. This is human papilloma virus. That's what it means. The, the other, the fourth group large group is risky behavior, of risky behavior, which is common now in Kenya, is this one, driving under the influence. Now that the alcohol was removed from the roads, you know it was removed. You cannot find a police telling you bro into this thing to find out how much alcohol it is in, in your system. I hope it will not lead to people driving under the influence. People have died, you know, young men and young women because of this. They go to a party, they drink, they don't have a designated driver to drive them home. They just enter into their vehicle and drive. And uh, they go and crash. Sons and daughters of very important people in this country have died 
because of that. Some of them driving very powerful cars. Ukikanyaga kidogo mafuta inaruka. Uh, driving while sleep deprived. When uh, you haven't slept enough and you are still driving. Yesterday I witnessed an accident which I believe was caused by this uh, sleep deprivation. Near uh, Kangemi, I was behind a matatu, so and ahead there was a stage. So the, at the stage, uh, a minibus uh, came, back, came to the road without checking the mirror whether there is another driver nearby. So he just whew, katoka. Now the, this is Nissan Matatus, the 14 seater. The driver was very close when he saw this driver I'm a talk. But I think either he was sleep deprived because he overreacted. He oversteered to avoid accidents. He steered too much to the right. So the car left the road and went <laughs> into the ditch. Yeah, so that is the kind of thing I'm saying. The driver, most likely, he had not slept well. And he was taking some people to Kisi because when I stopped to see whether there are people in, with injuries, and they were speaking Kisi. So he had just left Nairobi. <laughs> he was taking people to Kisi when he's half awake. <laughs> and then reckless drive i mean reckless driving and speeding the way young people you know somebody comes and cuts you in front eh? and then you say anataka kunionyesha gari yake ni powerful i will show him mine is also powerful unafukuzana na yeye and yet you don't know where this guy is going just drive yourself to where you are going drive slowly Avoid competing on the road. Huh? Or driving while using cell phones. You know, you are driving and you are on the phone. And I have found it. I have found many people driving like that. It is better to install a, a gadget you can put. Um, which mine uses a gadget inside the the car so i receive your call from the speaker phones speakers here speakers here radio or my system so i'll be able to hear you although now if i'm calling my family and there's a patient lady who is calling me telling me her problems everybody in the car will hear what we are discussing <laughs> that's the only danger eh? but uh, Using that is better than using holding. That is hands free. Motorcycles and uh, bicycle riding without helmets is another one. It's very common. We are fighting so many people being knocked down on the roads. They don't have helmets. In Kenyatta Hospital, it has one whole ward is dedicated to. Border borders. It's actually called border border ward. <laughs> Just because uh, so many people are injured on the roads, and utaenda uh, that word ukute migu imekuwa hang the jew, jew, trying to recover bigger problems. Hmm? Or possession of firearms. This one doesn't apply to us. Uh, guns without proper training and storage and uh, smoking in bed when you are in your bed and you are also smoking and sometimes people fall asleep and uh, you didn't switch off the cigarette what happens it falls onto your bed it smolders and starts a fire hmm? you can burn a house because of that Ah, that's the end. Um, so I don't know whether we go to another...
session so that I can pick the questions at a go.